Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a reciprocal transformation using SPSS. A reciprocal transformation is also known as an inverse transformation. And we use it when we have data that are not normally distributed, but we want to conduct parametric statistics that require normally distributed data. Now, two popular transformations that we commonly see in counseling research are logarithmic and square root, and I have separate videos that cover those transformations. Those transformations can be useful in certain circumstances, and so can the reciprocal transformation. So taking a look at the data editor here in SPSS, I have fictitious data loaded in, and I have three variables one named positive skew, one named negative skew, and one named normal. Let's first compare the positive skew variable with the normal variable. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. And I'm going to move positive skew over to the dependent list, list box, and normal over to the same list box. Under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, check off Histogram, and then check off normality plots with tests. Click Continue, and then click OK. And we can see here that for the positive skew variable, the skewness is 1.025. And for the normal variable, the skewness is 0 0.049, fairly close to 0. And if we look at the test on normality, in this case I'm going to interpret the Shapiro-Wilk, we can see that for the positive skew variable, we have to reject the null hypothesis that these data were sampled from a normal distribution because we have a value, a p-value, less than 0.05. But for the normal variable, we can assume that these data are normally distributed because we have a non-statistically significant finding of 0.694. And if we look at the histogram, here's the positive skew histogram. We can see there is a positive skew here. And again, when we look at the QQ plot, you see the data points below the line here, a little bit above the line in the middle, and then below the line again toward the right. Moving down to the box plot, we can see that we have several outliers, and they're all above the top whisker here in the box plot. Now taking a look at the results from the normal variable, you can see from this histogram uh, these data appear to be normally distributed. And we look at the normal QQ plot. Many of the points actually touch the line here, and the rest are quite close to it, indicating a normal distribution. And then moving down to the box plot, we can see we have no outliers. So the positive skew variable is a good candidate for a reciprocal transformation. We can use the reciprocal transformation on a variable when that variable is positively skewed and there are no negative numbers and no values close to zero. So if we look at the positive skew variable here, we can see that this variable meets the requirements for a reciprocal transformation. There are no negative numbers and there are no values here close to zero. To conduct the reciprocal or inverse transformation, we'll go to Transform, Compute Variable. And first, we need to name the target variable. I'm going to name this Inverse. And then the numeric expression is fairly straightforward. It's 1 divided by the variable. In this case, positive skew is the variable of interest. I'll click OK. And you can see now we have a new variable created in the data editor named inverse and these data are a result of a reciprocal transformation of the positive skew variable. So now if I go to analyze and descriptive statistics and then explore I'm going to reset this and I'm going to move in inverse and positive skew and then uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram and check off normality plots with tests. Click Continue. 
and then click OK. So we'll be comparing the positive skew variable to the inverse variable. And you can see here for the inverse variable, which is listed first here in the descriptives, the skewness is now 0.282. And remember the original skewness from positive skew, 1.025. So initially uh, it looks good, right? It reduced the skewness value by quite a bit. And if we look at the test of normality, we can see, of course, we knew positive skew, the positive skew variable. We had a statistically significant result here for Shapiro-Wilk, but for the inverse, we do not. We have a non-statistically significant result, 0.237. So we can assume based on this that the data in the inverse variable are normally distributed. And then looking at the histogram, you see it's roughly normally distributed, still a bit of a positive skew. Of course, we know that from the descriptives. And then moving down to the normal QQ plot, we can see the points are much closer to the line. Many are on the line uh, in this variable for inverse than for positive skew, although there is some deviation here toward the right of the plot. Then moving down to the box plot, we still have two outliers, uh, record six and record 74, but that is a significant improvement over what we had for the positive skew variable. So in this case, we would say that the inverse transformation, the reciprocal transformation was successful, that the variable positive skew was not normally distributed, and then after the inverse transformation, the new variable was normally distributed. So the reciprocal transformation can be useful for creating a normally distributed variable from data that were not normally distributed. But like all transformations, it has its limits and there are some distributions that cannot be successfully transformed into a variable that's normally distributed. I hope you found this video on performing the reciprocal or inverse transformation to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.